good day welcome to anefi discoveries in today's video we are going to talk about the part two of the previous video that the banker who stood firm and became a honey beekeeper in this video we are going to talk about the extraction the process what was is being used and why people should buy from credible sources he's going to say more about this please if you are new to this channel kindly do us a favor and subscribe turn on your notification button like comment and share as well may god be with us all today we are in your map and you can see how serene the place is this is what the honey Certain process before it's being crushed. The first process is removing the dead bees from it. Okay. So we have we've graded them according to color. So these are freshly harvested combs. You can see that these ones are darker in color. So we separate the darker ones from the lighter ones. These are darker combs because they are much older. Good. And we have these lighter ones because they are not very much older cones. Hey! <laughs> so like I was saying, you can see that this one contains bees. So we will take these bees out then the next process is crush them. So we are going to crush with this wood. We gently press. We are doing this way in order for it to be easier for us to extract when we put it in the extraction machine. Okay. But Mr. Moffat, why is it that the bees here are they are friendly as compared to being on the first year? They are not trying to harm. Instinct you. This is because we've taken them out of their territory. Okay. They is, now they don't have a, anything they are guiding. So they become uh, inactive. And also, why do you separate? them as based on the colors why are you not grinding them or putting them in your extracted machine together yes please. okay so what normally happens is um, the bees forage at different times of the season and the time of the season will determine the kind of nectar the bees bring to the hive so the older ones means that it contains different nectar the older ones they wouldn't, it's, it will never happen that the older combs contain same nectar for, uh, as compared to the new ones. So these are predominantly cashew, and these are from um, cassava, and then uh, these plants we call the fry ducks. They, they, this compose of those two flowers. How do you stand on that fact to say this is from a cashew nectar and this is also from cassava? Okay, so normally we do a survey and we know the majority of uh, forage resources, that's the nocturnal resources around our zone. So we know that the try that and because we, our community uh, is a um, cassava cultivating community, we get a lot of those flowers, that flower around, uh, that is June, June to November. Then the cashew, the mangoes will also start. But it's a cashew growing area. So from now till somewhere April, you will have the bees foraging on the cashew trees and the fruit. So now we are staring. Possibly crashed. We, we, we are going to transfer them into this one. Okay. 
Let me ask this. Why are you genuinely doing this? Uh, I think it's, it's part of the requirements of the FDA. Normally, um, when you are processing um, food, like a honey's food, for the general public, it has to come with hygiene. So your environment must comply with those standards. So you have to come with a lab coat, you must wear a nose mask, you know. Occasionally, we may talk. Okay. And we don't intend saliva to fall into the honey, but you know people are going to eat it. Okay. You must wear the gloves in order not to cross-contaminate anything. And we are wearing the bonnets because we don't want hair to also come in contact with our product. That's why we are dressed this way. That's nice. So please, what's the name of this? I can just see that it's a, a seed. Yes, these are honey press. Honey? Honey press. Okay. It's a cold honey press. Cold honey press. Yes. We have the warm type. Okay. That one, we connect it to electricity. It partially heats the combs and melts the honey. Okay. But this yolk is going to use pressure. So we are using this, the cold press method to extract our honey. And this cloth is intended to separate the wax. It's not to allow the particles penetrate through the small pores here. Okay. So only the honey will get access to the holes okay. and drain into the buckets. Okay. So we pull the cloth, uh, the, the rope, then the mouth is sealed. Then we're going to put this uh, metal that is going to serve as the press. Okay. And we connect to this one. So this is your extractor machine? This is your extractor machine. In fact, this, this is a smaller one. Okay. We, we intend buying a bigger one because our production is going up. Okay. So this one, aside the bodybuilders and uh, the muscular ones, can anyone handle it? Oh, it's much easier, you know. One of our staff here, she's a female, but you soon see her extracting it or using it. Or oh, maybe she's from Taiwan. <laughs> Taiwan they are slim by the American. It doesn't come with any difficulty. You just turn it and it presses the hand. So I can do Yes. Once I install it, I'll let you have a try. actually prefer that type of honey because occasionally the raw honey crystallizes yes due to some factors it will crystallize but the pasteurized one will never crystallize because that factor has been taken out so how long that can this stay this can stay um, like forever in fact, honey doesn't have uh, expiring date. But you were saying the, uh, the brown ones last than this one. No, I'm talking about crystallization. Okay. 
Yes. When honey crystallizes, it doesn't mean it has gone bad. Okay. Yes, you can return it to its original state by just eating. You eat and you get your honey back. Because last year alone, we were able to produce three tons of honey. At a time? Yes, three tons. Three tons. So let's say this 200 liters, and about uh, five of these should give us one ton. About five of these should give us five one ton. Five of these should give us one ton. And we have three tons. That's about 15 of these. Yes, so, when this room is able to accommodate that? Yes. We intend adding more hives this year, and we are looking at uh, producing close to uh, 13 tons by. 13 tons. We should be able to produce 13 tons by 2030. 2023 or 2030? 2030. 2023, we have 245 colonies. 245 colonies. So they can't produce to them? No, they can't. We will not be able to produce that. So, how do you, like, I mean, how do you think you'll be able to produce? From the two, uh, 240. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get like three tons, 3.3 tons. Annually. Annually. Okay. But you were saying last year you had three tons at a time. Yeah, we had three tons. We had three tons because the point three was stolen by people. Okay. We had people teeth going into our farm, breaking into our farm to harvest our honey. Hey, how? <laughs> You know, those uh, village guys, they use the old method, the burning, you burn the bees and you harvest the honey. Okay. That was the technique they used. They didn't wear bee suits. So they stole from close to 30 hives. Oh. Yes. At least we try our best to get up to like say 90% of the honey out. I think this is so nice. The honey is nice. The, from the ones that I'm picking. Okay, eating from the comb. From all right, all right. Is it different from the wax and the comb? The wax. The wax, once the comb is melted, you get the wax. Okay. So, we should not call this the wax. So, this is a this, pure wax? This is wax. Okay. Can I also say that this is a mixed comb? Because I, I can see some of the nectar, the comb being white and others also being grown as you said, the, the darker ones. So, we call it a mixed comb? Yeah, that's what I'm just saying. <laughs> So once we extract and get this, we are going to render, the technical term is render. Okay. We melt it, then we mold them into wax bars by using molds. 
So once the honey, uh, the wax is extracted, it will also be extracted. So we take the impurities, we call them slam. I just call it slanga. So we take that impurity, separate that one from the wax, and we get the original form, which is about yellow color. It, it has different shades of yellow, and that becomes your wax. And it's used for many things, cosmetic purposes. When you go to the textile industry, it's used to make textiles. So pe some people use it for uh, polish, wood polish. So I have carpenters coming to me to buy the raw wax, and they go to make the wood polish for the wax. And a car polish, you know, some people do not want to see those cracks. You know, over time your car develops some cracks on them. There, there are polish for cars that could let the paint last. So if you want that, uh, if you want to take that property, that is the cracking property from the paint, there is what we call the wax, uh, the car polish, and this, they use the bee wax to make it. Oh wow. Mm -hmm. So this wax I use for shoes. Shoe polish? This, so I think today is my first time for seeing this. Your first time seeing? A wax. Okay. Okay. Today is my first time okay. for seeing I think the popular one you will know with candle. It is also used for candles. It's extracted and we have enough. We don't put it, this is our settling tank. The honey will stay in this like for a week or two for all the pollen grains, the bubbles, and any particle that found its way into the honey to come on top for it to be collected. So I'm going to pour it into this. <coughs> I think we are about halfway already. Okay. Mm -hmm. crystallizes it solidifies and this is a typical example it looks like sugar so this, this is, is your uh, this your honey own. this is the one that has not been bought yes this is the unpasteurized honey okay the raw state okay. okay so raw honey with time crystallizes and it doesn't mean that it has gone bad okay okay so if you want to uh, bring it back to its non uh, natural state you only have to boil it maybe uh, up to um, 25 minutes just put it in warm water for say 25 minutes and you get the liquid form what again. of those using the microwave microwave um i'm not really used to microwaves okay. so i think the best thing is to put it in water hot water hot water mm -hmm. different from three different nectar sources okay. so I want you to try them to tell me the kind of flavor you get okay. Okay. it's nice but can I pour the oil? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. 
please add more add more add more okay any difference yeah okay This one, uh, this is um, cashew. This is cashew, and these are from some wild plants. This is not cashew, and this is from the cassava and the trident I was talking about. But to me, I prefer this one than all of them. The cashew is the sweetest uh -huh, because this one was so sweet, and this one was having a bit sour taste. Sour? Something like that, like after it, like it was nice, but. It wasn't as to this. Okay. This one, I can't get, like everything was just sweet. But this one. This is the sweetest. So it's sweet, sweeter, sweet. No, sweet. sweetest. Sweet, sweeter, sweetest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the sweetest of it. Too. All right, all right, all right. And it comes here. Okay. Like this one. Okay. So it's because of the season. The season. The season determines the kind of flower shape this will pick. Can it have some effect on you, maybe when you deliver it to your clients? Um, I think my customers like the cashew, so normally we do not harvest um, in the minor season. We're supposed to harvest twice a year, but if you harvest in the minor season, you end up picking this type of honey. You know, although it's honey, but it's not sweet. Some people use honey because they want to substitute honey for sugar. So if it's not that sweet, it means that uh, they don't get that essence. Okay. I want to substitute honey for sugar and the honey I'm getting is not sweet. So how do I use it to sweeten my food? So we prefer harvesting at the right time. That is when the um, cashew is in abundance. Okay. So can I test? You try it? again. Okay. <laughs> You can actually go with it. <laughs> yeah. Let me try. Let me try. I think I need to try again. <laughs> My brother, let me try again. Go to try again. <laughs> Yes, too much could also trigger these uh, uh, diabetes or I see too saying. much honey because it has uh, glucose in it, glucose, glucose and sucrose. So when you eat it in excess, it could also give you diabetes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. But it's much safer than the sugar. refined sugar. Oh, I think I thought I was especially in honey but based on the adverse effect that you are giving right now if mm -hmm. i don't take care they will they will take my analysis and my degree from me so <laughs> i'll just go by the letter i have now thank you very much is, is this a normal solitaire or so solitaire or soup yeah no 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 this is not soup this is bee wax bee wax bee wax so what? once the one I showed you earlier, when the honey is okay. So when the honey is crushed and you extract the honey, it goes through another process known as the wax rendering process, and you get this. Wow! You get this shape because we use wax mold. So this is what I was talking about. It be used for polish, wood, wood polish, car polish, shoe polish, in textiles, and then in pomades, some pomades. Soap. Initially, I thought this is a special solitary for a soap. No, 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 no. That's beeswax. Okay. Smell it and see. It has traces of honey in it. Yeah. But the normal wax we see doesn't have that smell. 
Yeah, that is because they've taken this, um, maybe they, they have added aromatic flavor or they've just taken everything that is the scent from it. So because it has been refined, that's why I can yes, see it. Yes, it has been refined, there's no traces of the honey. So does it mean that this one, if you just put that loop here, it, it will light. It will light. Yes. So what is the size of this? Uh, this weighs about 30 grams, uh, 300. Yeah, 3, 6, 3, 30. Okay. Wow, it's so accurate. So can you tell us the price of this one before they tell it confidential? Okay, so this is a sample we use to show our customers okay. that we have wax, but we sell them in kilos. Okay. And a kilo is sold for 70 cents per kilo. Okay. The crystallized one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The crystallized honey. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let me put this on record. Many people think that uh, crystallized honey is an outdoor treated honey. Okay. See, when they buy from the beekeepers, and you know, over time, when it crystallizes, they come complaining. Oh, I saw sugar at the bottom. I saw sugar at the bottom. Raw honey what time crystallizes, like I've said. So if somebody should see um, that property of the honey, it hasn't gone bad or it's not adulteration. Crystallization does not mean adulteration. There are people who genuinely want to adulterate because of the uh, demand for honey, honey products. But if it is natural, what time it crystallizes, then it's not a bad property. Okay, I think, let me ask this question to you. Uh, in Kumasi, I've heard so many people saying foam, honey, and those sorts of things. Being in this profession, can there be a possible way that some people can use foam to make to adulterate honey? Yes, please. This is a very important question you asked me. Okay. Um, there are bad ones among us okay. who would want to find means because they are not able to produce the honey in large quantities. You know, when we are talking about ours, we produce in three tons. So maybe we have enough to sell. They go harvesting from hollows of trees, so in very limited quantity. And if the demand is high, they keep asking them, do you have a have honey? Then they will want to add substances. Not only the foam, they add syrups. I think those are advanced ways of adulterating honey, and you can use the human senses to detect. Mm. Yes. So you find people coming, oh, I'm an expert. If you put fake honey here, I'll be able to taste it to know that this is fake honey. Trust me, the person get it wrong. Mm. You can use human senses, using your eyes, the nose to smell, the tongue to taste, to identify that this is quality or good honey. You can't. Well, so yes. then are you telling audience and people out there that they should be buying from a credible that is it. If you want to know that the honey you are consuming is good, buy from a source you trust. Okay. Precisely from a beekeeper. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you. Please, you can contact Mr. Moffitt with the details given on the screen. He's a facilitator in beekeeping. And also, if you want anything credible to honey, was Anything concerning bees and honey, you can contact Mr. Moffitt. Please, as we said already, if you are new to this channel, please like, comment, share our video. Don't forget to turn on your notification button. The king client is very necessary. May God be with us all. Enjoy your weekend.